As NASA's James Webb Space Telescope navigates around space, it continues to provide breathtaking images that give us a better understanding of our cosmos. The science community has been working hard to analyze their data and put it into peer-reviewed scientific publications, which are finally coming to fruition. We are astonished by its results, but mission team members believe the best is still to come from the telescope. According to recent research, the James Webb Space Telescope detected and sent in an image capable of changing everything. And Michio Kaku, the co-founder of String Field Theory and one of the world's most well-known scientists, is not silent about it. What exactly could this be? And why is Michio Kaku keenly interested? Stay tuned as we find out. Research with the JWST has unraveled an exoplanet that exists outside of our solar system. This is the nearest such planet yet identified. It's also inside its own solar system's habitable zone, where liquid water may exist. This implies that life might exist on the planet. As a consequence of this game-changing study, preparations are in the works to launch uncrewed spacecraft to further investigate Proxima b. As theoretical physicist Michio Kaku doesn't merely hope that humanity finds its way to other worlds. He has chosen the perfect location, which he believes is Proxima Centauri b in the Alpha Centauri triple star system. He's even proposed that the next big space adventure occurs aboard a postage-stamp-sized spacecraft traveling at 20% the speed of light and sent by high-powered lasers. It seems like a crazy hypothesis, but if anyone's crazy theories will likely come true in the next 100 years, it's Michio Kaku's. According to physics rules, sending a spacecraft to Proxima Centauri b is not impossible. This Earth-like planet orbits Proxima Centauri. Current technology can deliver a postage stamp-sized chip connected to a parachute to neighboring stars at around 20% of the speed of light. Therefore, this gadget may reach Proxima Centauri, the closest known star to the Sun, after 20 years. Today's technologies help us carry out activities that take thousands of years to accomplish. That, in fact, is the future predicted by scientist Michio Kaku. He thinks we are on the verge of leaving the digital age behind for a quantum era that would usher in unprecedented scientific and cultural transformation. Computers will no longer utilize transistors to do computations, but rather subatomic particles, unleashing immense computing power. Another scientist compared it to installing a rocket engine in your car. According to Kaku, the rocket engine of quantum computing will drastically revolutionize studies in chemistry, biology, and physics, with many side consequences. It will, among other things, allow us to remove CO2 from the air and convert it into fuel with waste products recovered and rescued, a process known as carbon recycling. It will allow us to extract nitrogen from the atmosphere without the high temperatures and pressures that account for 2% of global energy use today, ushering in a new green revolution. It will overcome the architectural and technical hurdles preventing us from creating cheap, plentiful electricity via nuclear fusion. It will enable us to develop super-efficient batteries to help renewables go further. Current lithium-ion batteries carry only about 1% of the energy stored in gasoline. It will also lead to dramatically effective therapies for cancer, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disorders, among other ailments. Quantum computers can do computations significantly quicker than digital computers. They do this via qubits, the quantum counterpart of bits, the zeros and ones that transport information in a traditional computer. Whereas bits are kept as electrical charges in transistors etched into silicon chips, qubits are represented by particle attributes, such as an electron's angular momentum. Because the laws of classical physics do not apply in the strange subatomic world, qubits can take any value between 0 and 1, enabling a mysterious process known as quantum entanglement, which Einstein famously called spooky action at a distance. In his book, Kaku earnestly attempts to describe these mechanics. Still, it is difficult for a non-specialist to completely comprehend. When we document quantum mechanics, we're faced with converting mathematical expressions into language. Whether we use English, German, Chinese, or another language, our language did not develop to represent quantum behavior. We're left with metaphors of various use, like the toy trains with compasses and mice in mazes that Kaku uses to teach complicated concepts like superposition and root integrals. Aside from this, there is one essential takeaway. Reality is quantum and quantum computers can imitate it in ways digital computers cannot. 
Mother Nature does not compute digitally because the quantum principle is the language of nature. Quantum computers should be able to disclose the secrets of life, the universe, and matter. To know precisely how photosynthesis works or how one protein interacts with the human body, you can use a quantum computer's virtual lab to mimic it perfectly. Designing drugs that disrupt biological processes that have gone astray, such as cancer cell growth or protein misfolding in Alzheimer's disease, might become more straightforward. Kaku even believes that the mystery of aging will be solved so that we can stop it. Hence, one of his book's chapters is titled Immortality, because they depend on tiny particles that are very sensitive to any form of disturbance. Quantum computers are complicated to build. Most can only operate at temperatures near absolute zero when everything slows down and ambient noise is limited. So far, the world's most sophisticated quantum computer, IBM's Osprey, has 433 qubits. This may not seem like much, but according to the business, the number of classical bits required to represent a state on the Osprey processor far exceeds the total number of atoms in the known universe. They don't disclose that it only works for 70 to 80 millionths of a second before being swamped by noise. Furthermore, the computations it can do have extremely restricted uses. According to Kaku, a workable quantum computer that can solve real-world problems is still many years in the future. Some scientists, such as Mikhail Diakonov of the University of Montpellier, feels that the technological obstacles make it unlikely that a quantum computer that could compete with your laptop would ever be constructed. Now the big question is, why does humanity have to relocate to another planet when we already live in one? Here's the thing, extinction is undoubtedly the norm of Mother Nature, which is why 99.9% .9 of all species on Earth go extinct. The principles of physics tend to play out as always. That's why humanity's ultimate destination must be in space. Scientists believe that life will become more fascinating on another planet. Robotics will have improved dramatically by the time humans successfully design a spacecraft. Self-replicating robots will be used to develop new cities. The machines will replicate themselves by mining local minerals, so with one robot you obtain multiple results. All interstellar concepts will be tested on Mars. The trial run prepares us for visits to Proxima Centauri b. We can extend the brain's powers thanks to cutting-edge technologies. It's currently feasible to link the brain directly to a computer, enabling individuals to do tasks just by thinking about them. As a result, we may connect our thoughts to the internet, providing us with endless information or a machine. There will be contact lenses that enable you to blink while looking for information on the internet without needing to open a computer. Furthermore, we can communicate mentally, such as by thinking about sending an email. We'll eventually be able to convey memories and feelings as well. The digital internet will evolve into the brain net as silent films evolve into talkies. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.